What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and before we get into this video, if you guys haven't seen the theory section, I suggest you go back and watch that and then come back to this one so that you guys can basically get the rundown of how this video is going to go. But um, I'm going to have the timestamps in place for everybody that already has their HP bars and are ready to go. But uh, for those who don't uh, have one, or if you're just curious about the workflow here, then just keep watching and let's get started. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sprite here. This sprite is going to be both the border of our uh, HP bar as well as the actual I want to call it the actual HP bar itself right the bit that we're going to draw and draw chunks of as the health changes so let's call this uh, actually I haven't thought of a name let's call it UI HP let's keep it nice and simple and you know what let's make the canvas instead of 64 height let's make it Let's keep it simple, 16, there we go, apply. All right, we're going to keep the origin in the top left corner and the basic, basically the short version of why we're going to keep it in the top left corner is because if we try to fiddle around with it and we start drawing on the UI, it's going to come up with some weird looking things. We don't want that. So what I've done here for the first, um, for the first frame is just the actual border of our health bar itself. It's going to be empty, so there's no background. If you guys do want a background, you'll have to add a little extra stuff onto here, onto this bit, but for now we're just going to keep it um, see-through. So it's basically, I mean, it can act as a background as well, so you know what, let's, let's do that. Let's fill this in with, I don't know, dark gray, yeah lighter there we go so let's just say for example we want to draw our sprite like so that's it doesn't really matter which frame it is I'm just gonna keep it at zero though so that I know because I mean we have a certain process to follow here I'd like to stick to that so let's draw our health bar like that all right so this button by the way is called the onion skin and for animators, it's pretty self-explanatory what the onion skin is. But for those who are unfamiliar, basically what this does is it shows us the frames of an animation before and after, hence the name onion skin. If you can imagine how onion skin works, right? You can see through it. And that's basically what it does. It's generally to help animators see frames both before and after the current frame that you're working on, but for us, it helps us draw our health bar sprite. So enough looking at that horrid green line, and we can see now that we have two different images, right? That's perfect as it is. All right, make sure that your sprite origin is in the top left. I don't wanna change that because I'm going to have problems if I do. Uh, let's go into the objects now, into the player unit. And before we get started, uh, before, not before we get started, before we continue, I forgot to mention something in the theory video itself, and we are going to need two new variables. These two variables are going to store the width and the height of our HP bar. So uh, unsurprisingly, we'll have HP bar width. When you're writing the names of your variables, it does help to write the name in full, just in case you come back to the project after a break, or if you hand the project over to somebody else to get them to work on it for you. It helps to have the full name of the actual variable itself so that there's no confusion and people can get to work straight away. So with HP bar width, we're going to store the width of the HP sprite itself. So. Uh, sprite underscore get width, there it is. And we need the name, which is UI HP. And of course we also need the height. So HP bar width, uh, not width, height is sprite get height. There we go. And we're going to use UI HP for that as well. All right. So 
These two we are going to reference as we draw the UI itself, which is going to be now. So we go to draw and draw GUI. Before I continue again, another stop. Here in our room, we are not using um, viewports, not yet. I might do that at the, either the video after this or right at the end of this section. I haven't quite decided on that yet. I'll, but if I do make one, it will probably, I think it should be right after this one. I don't know, I'll figure that out and whichever video comes up first, whether, you know, putting in the camera UI and or the death that'll come up first because we are eventually going to be working with a more full UI, not a complete UI, but we'll be getting there eventually. So I'd like to knock that one out as well, but uh, we'll see about that. All right, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to draw these sprites here as two separate frames. All right, so let's draw, well, let's draw the background first. And I want to make something clear about draw order. So for the background, we only need to draw sprite, which is this top one. And all it needs is the UI HP. So which, which sprite are you going to draw? The sub image that you need, as well as the position. So we want to draw X and Y. Let's keep that there for now. And let's see what happens when we test it out. It overlaps the character's heads. That's because the origin, wherever my sprite is, the origin is also in the top corner here. And so naturally it's going to overlap. There are two ways that you can create an offset by changing the origin to the bottom down here, which I won't do because I've had problems with that um, in recent versions of 2.3. So I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm going to use code to draw the, the actual sprite itself just a little above the character's heads. So it won't be, actually, you know what? Let's make it 20. So it won't be right above them that it looks like it's the character scraping their head right under the, the HP bar. There's going to be some dead space between there. And you can see here now that the backing is above the player's heads, but they're not hitting their heads against it, which is a nice look and makes it look a little neater. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually draw the, the actual health bar itself. For that, we need draw sprite, draw sprite, not draw sprite, but rather draw sprite part. The idea here is that we're going to draw the health bar in relation to how much health the unit still has. And so we can't just draw the whole bar as is. We need to draw parts of it. And I'm using the wrong version of draw sprite part, not extended. Extended gives us more functionality, but it's functionality that we don't need right now. All right, so basically it's, it's almost the same UI HP, not JP, HP. We now need sub image one. We are not going to crop anything out from the left because we want our health bars to go from the right side and gradually go down until it's on the left side. So we need to set that to zero. Same thing for the top, we need to set that to zero. Width, this is where this, these two variables come into play. The first one that we're going to need is of course going to be HP bar width. And then the second one is going to be HP bar height. Of course, we need the position as well, X and Y minus 20. All right, let's play our game and let's see what that looks like. We can see here now that it lines up just right. Okay, so everything looks good. But if I try attacking, we can see that, let me just try and do some damage here if they would like to hit, we can see that it's not moving yet. The reason for that is because we actually need to calculate how much health they still have. And so up here in a local variable, I'll just call mine HP. I'll go ahead and from that theory video, I'll put in the current health, current health divided by the max health. Oh, 
All right, so that gives us our current in relation to our base. And all we're going to do is HP bar width. We're going to multiply that, multiply by the HP value, just like that. And so now if I try playing the game and hopefully the attack hits, we can see now that the health bar gradually gets peeled away, right? It goes down, it goes down, it goes down. And then eventually we hit zero. Now, the next section is going to be us dealing with what happens when a unit hits zero health, right? So don't worry about it going into negative numbers. But for now, we've actually done away with our health. Finally, we can get rid of this health here. We don't need this anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this extra line of code because we don't need it, right? So there we go. In fact, we can even get rid of that there. All right, so if we try playing our game now, nothing's changed. I just got rid of some of the debug code that we had there, which is good. Eventually, we're not going to have any of this debug text at all. Um, what we're going to do is when we hover over a unit, it's going to show us the numbers details, right? As some sort of pop-up. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is. So like I said, this is it. We can now attack and the health bar drains away if they hit their attacks and if the damage is not positive or equal to zero. So there you go. This section is basically done. And so the next bit is either going to be us working with the death code or with setting up our camera so that we can implement UI ahead of time. I'll, I'll think about that, but uh, whatever comes next will be the next video. All right, guys. So that's all for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see more and get up to date, be up to date with new uploads. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on. If you guys like this video, please do leave a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, of course, you can ask me in the comment section below. Um, as for the Discord that I'm thinking about opening, I am going to set that up as soon as I can. Um, I'm just a basic user of Discord, so I'm like, I'm still trying to work things out on my end on how to set things up. And I need to find moderators as well. So if you want to become a mod for a Discord server, then do let me know again in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.